What's up my fellow artists and creatives? Hey, welcome back to another Adrian Graphics and Marketing video. I'm Adrian Boisel and today's video is for the people that are noobs to graphic design. Maybe you're a brand new, you've never used a design program ever, and you're out there doing some research whether you should use Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo or Photoshop or Illustrator going Adobe or Affinity route. There's a lot of different things that I wanna share with you guys today, but we're gonna keep this video pretty short. But today is gonna to be mostly about you saving some money as a newbie in the graphic design field. How many of you guys like to save money? I know I do. The first and the biggest bonus to doing something like Affinity is actually being able to save some money. But you can get Affinity Designer for 50 bucks and you can also get Affinity Photo for 50 bucks. And they even have an Affinity uh, publisher as well for 50 bucks. So you could spend 100 to 50 to 150 bucks buying all of the Affinity programs that they have right now and be able to take care of most of what you would need and most of what you would use with Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign. But it's not all about saving money at the end of the day. Sometimes you need to have certain functionalities and features that some of these programs are just limited to. So I wanna go through these real quick. I got seven things that I'm gonna go over with you of why you'd use Affinity Photo over Adobe Photoshop or Affinity Designer over Adobe Illustrator. And so we're gonna make this today mostly about Illustrator and Designer because those two programs are very, very similar. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. The first thing that you need to think about is like I said, you can get Affinity Designer for about 50 bucks. It's pretty affordable. You're gonna pay anywhere between 20, 30, 40, or $50 a month to have the Adobe Creative Cloud. If you just get one program, I believe it's about 20 to $30. If you get the whole suite, you're gonna pay about 50 to 60 bucks. That's not including any of the other features that they have, which there's some amazing features like cloud storage and Adobe Stock, some other cool stuff like that. But it's much more affordable if you're a new designer and you don't have a lot of income coming in, you just to get the program, make the investment in the program, get yourself started, get familiar with a design program, especially if you've just been drawing on paper or drawing on some sort of an app and you wanna become more professional, this is a really great place to start is Affinity. Now, the second thing about Affinity Designer that I, li I like in comparison to Adobe um, Illustrator is the fact that it's easy to learn. The platform is super simple. All the icons are, in are colored. Everything is really cleanly labeled. You can see everything very easily. And Adobe Illustrator can be really overwhelming. There's a big learning curve. I went directly from using Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects, which was really technical, to using Photoshop, which was a little bit easier for me. And then I hopped over to Adobe uh, Illustrator and I was just like so overwhelmed. And so there is a pretty big learning curve because of all the functionalities and features that Adobe Illustrator has. And so you're gonna have a much easier time using Affinity Designer versus Adobe Illustrator. So I really wanted to make sure that you understand that. That's point number two. Now, point number three is raster versus pixels. Hopefully you know what this is. As a newbie designer, this is very, very important. Pixels is just like it sounds. You're gonna have little pixels that are gonna make up an image. Thousands and thousands of pixels make up one image. 1920 by 1080, right? Those are pixels. Now, once you start going up from there, you start getting bigger, you're gonna have to start scaling these designs onto bigger canvases, which is gonna be in bigger file sizes, just to not lose the resolution and for them not to be blurry. Now with Affinity Designer, you're gonna be primarily working in vector versus pixels. Pixels is gonna be more on the photo side, just like you do in Photoshop. And so you're gonna actually be able to scale these images, scale these designs in more artwork. You're gonna actually be able to create custom illustrations and drawings and designs that are gonna be vector based, which is really neat because you can blow them up billboard size and they'll never become pixelated. So this is really, really neat. And really comparing that to Adobe Illustrator, there's not much there because they both do vector, but you're gonna have a lot more functionality with Adobe Illustrator. So if you're ready to kind of take that big jump and move over to the Adobe side and get the Adobe Creative Cloud and you're ready to make this your career, then I would encourage you, go over to Adobe and start there. But if you don't wanna overcome the learning curve and you just wanna start and just get some momentum, Affinity Designer is a really great way to go. Now, the fourth thing that I really like about um, Affinity Designer versus Adobe Illustrator is the fact that the workspace is very clean and very simple. You can't customize it as much as you can inside of Adobe Illustrator. There's tons of functions and features and windows and things you can turn off and on and display, but there's a lot less functions and features within the Adobe Designer. So I really want you to take that to heart as you're really limiting the amount of functions and features you're gonna get with Affinity Designer. If you're an artist and you're not really too worried about all those extra bells and whistles, 
and you can create some pretty good hand-drawn artwork and you can bring that into your program, this is really gonna be a huge step for you to begin with going from paper. Now, one of the, the fourth thing you need to look at on the Adobe Illustrator side is that there actually is a lot of other programs that Adobe Illustrator is compatible with. It really is compatible with Illustrator, it's compatible with InDesign, it's compatible with XD, with experience design. There's a lot of different features and functions that it ties into and you can grab programs or grab files and bring them into each other. So you're gonna miss out on that if you do something like Affinity Designer. I don't mind. Uh, if I was a noob, that's where I would start. I'm not really worried about being cross compatible between all the different programs. Uh, but one of the things that is a big deal that I think that Affinity Designer doesn't have that Adobe Illustrator does is the cloud. When you work in the cloud, you can start saving your files in the cloud. It's Adobe Creative Cloud, right? And so having this function and feature to be able to save your files, not on your computer itself, but on the cloud. So if something happens to your computer, gets destroyed, gets lost, gets stolen, you still have your files. This is a really great feature. Now, don't get me wrong. You could download something like Dropbox or Google Drive and save your stuff in there. But having this feature that's built into your design program has been really, really nice. I like to store my files in the cloud. I've just started doing that more often. I'm probably gonna be doing this primarily. So it's something you really wanna consider as well. Now, number six is the fact that Affinity Designer and Adobe Illustrator are very different from the perspective of you can have the desktop program on both of your computers, but on Adobe, they've actually created apps. So you can have mobile apps for Adobe Illustrator, for Photoshop, they have Photoshop Express, they have Lightroom. There's tons of apps that you can do this stuff on the go. You can't do that with Affinity Designer. There are limitations of what you're gonna be able to get. And the saying really comes down to it at the end of the day, you get what you pay for. You're not paying as much, you're not paying that monthly fee. So they're probably not gonna innovate and continue to grow Affinity Designer the same way that they have with Photoshop and Illustrator and all the Adobe programs. Adobe is a publicly traded company. They have shareholders, they're a beast. And so they're gonna be constantly innovating, constantly adding new features. And so it's really growing so fast that I haven't even been able to keep up with it. So something to think about, if you don't wanna be overwhelmed by the software and all the things that it does, then you definitely wanna consider using Affinity Designer. Now the last thing, and this is really what I wanna send you guys home with. Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher is really created for the people who are new to the design industry who just want to get their hands around a design program and not just be drawing on paper or using paint or something like that or some sort of generic Mac program. If you want a professional design software, Affinity Designer is a very, very good way to go and I highly encourage you guys to just get that to start with. Now, if you're a pro and you already have experience using design programs, maybe Procreate or one of the other ones, it's time for you to upgrade and step up to the big boys plate and pay the money, okay? Stop complaining. I hear a lot of people, and you're probably gonna drop some comments about this, but stop complaining about the cost of Adobe Creative Cloud. I have multiple Adobe Creative Cloud memberships and I have the add-ons. I don't complain about it. It's cost of doing business. My clients cover those costs. It doesn't come out of my own pocket and I just tried to save a couple bucks to pick up pennies is not worth it. So they're really both great options for you, but if you're brand new, I want you to just go over and check out Affinity, download that, get comfortable with it, and then you can upgrade once you got some money coming in to Adobe. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was really valuable and gave you a ton of information to be able to go out and work with. And just remember, Adobe is the industry standard. So if you're doing anything outside of that, you're really gonna have a lot less resources. And that's part of why I wanted to make this video and I'm doing some tutorials on Affinity. So thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. And as always, keep looking up.